Of course, as Assistant Defence Minister, you'll be very focused on the Australian Defence Force personnel on duty today, and none more important at the moment than the crew of the HMS Adelaide on its way to Tonga to help out that country after the tsunami and volcano eruption. They're suffering some cases of COVID on the ship. Can you give us the latest where the ship is, what it's up to, and how that COVID infection situation is going? Sure, Chris. Uh, 23 cases of COVID on board. The crew are isolating. There's no one with a severe case of, of COVID at this point in time. And we're there to, to help uh, the Tongan government and people. And so we have to take as much health precautions as possible. We're working very closely with the Tongan government uh, to make sure that uh, we respect their sovereignty and we provide the aid that they desperately need. So um, I think we're coming alongside soon, or if not already, and we'll be unloading those ships very, very carefully to make sure that we maintain the health of the Tongan people who've just been through a really, really tough time. Uh, but we're doing that in partnership with the US, the UK, Japan and other countries. And this is all part of Australia being a regional power and a good neighbour looking after our close friends. Yeah, it's fantastic stuff. We are a giant in the Pacific. We've got to do, we do a lot for the Pacific. We've got to keep doing a lot more, especially when you have this strategic competition from China trying to move in to that sphere of influence. And I just wanted to ask you, when we think about China and its role in the region, whether we ought to be especially careful at the moment. There's a huge focus on Russia and the Ukraine, understandably. But when you think about the way international... Uh, strategies uh, and geopolitics plays out. Would you be concerned that perhaps Beijing might be looking at getting a little bit progressive in our region while all the eyes are focused on Ukraine? I'm thinking particularly about intimidating Taiwan and the like. Is it a particularly dangerous time in our region when there's so much happening in Eastern Europe? It's a very dangerous time. I've said many times before that the US has underwritten uh, world security since the Second World War, with their naval power principally. And at the moment, they're under immense pressure. They, they have the challenge of Russia uh, massing troops on the border of Ukraine in Eastern Europe. And of course, uh, China continues to uh, normalise um, aggressive behaviour around Taiwan and in the South China Sea. And so for the US, this is a big challenge. There's a, a, a dilemma, really. They've got to keep their eyes focused both on, on Europe and also the Indo-Pacific region. And we have a, an important role to play here, and that is to uphold the rules-based global order right here in the Indo-Pacific. Um, we partner very closely with Japan, um, India, the US and other countries. And so our focus must be here in the Indo-Pacific and uh, particularly in times of natural disaster, helping our Pacific neighbours, because the last thing we want is the Chinese government moving in and supplanting um, some of those relationships, which, which are critical. They're long-standing, they're historic, they're rooted in deep affection for, for each other, and that's why we need to be a good neighbour and help people out like Tonga in times of crisis.